I think Daddy's having too much fun. This one, as you can probably tell, is the C7 Corvette Stingray, uh, Z51. And this car is also supercharged. It has a uh, ECS blower on it, which is what, a Paxton it's a, Novi? It's a Novi 1500. Novi 1500. So this car made 584 rear wheel horsepower about a year and a half ago. The stock and engine. And the stock engine. Stock LT1. Uh, we have headers, don't you? Yep. So the headers, high, or, uh, no cats. Stock mufflers, bi-mode exhaust. However, um, something happened earlier this year. The uh, the engine, something went wrong, didn't really run right, had a misfire. And basically the shop that put everything together, took it apart, said you got an engine that, uh, it's got something wrong with it. We don't have, uh, what is it, don't have compression in cylinder seven or something. Yep. So options were rebuild or go big or go home. He went big. We're going home. Uh, so now we've got a 416 LT1, which is like a 6.8 liter, smaller pulley, and it made 630 horsepower initially. Yeah. So what we didn't realize, the shop that installed it realized that the ECS East Coast Supercharging Kit came with a restrictor plate, and that restrictor plate. It, it uh, did what it's supposed to do. It restricted <laughs> because the blower can produce so much, you know, so many pounds of boost. Stock engines aren't, you know, ready for that. So anyway, they took that off, the restrictor off, and we got 782 wheel horsepower. So, yeah, 782, which uh, amounts to probably 900 crank, and uh, it's an animal. You put what two? Absolute animal. I got about 150 miles on it so far. The dyno, uh, the speed shop that did the install and tune, they did a dyno break-in, so set the rings. And I'm just gonna take it easy, relatively easy, for about a thousand miles. <clears throat> I'm not going to uh, do any hardcore drag racing, or, or I am planning to do the half mile in Illinois uh, in down in Rain School in October. So just gonna put some relatively easy miles on it. Not to say I'm not gonna get on it once in a while. We're gonna do a little bit here, but. Um, once that's done, we change the oil and I got, I'm got i good to go. But this is a Texas Speed fully built 416 short block with a stage three cam. And I have an aftermarket McLeod uh, high performance clutch. The only thing really that I didn't touch was the transaxle and rear end. So that could be the next thing to go, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm in a big it's always It's always a game of which, where's the weakest link now? Yeah, so. But up front, all that clutch up ahead, everything, that's the strong points. Uh, but again, it's a, this is a car he drives relatively frequently, and it's not a uh, it's not like a drag racing only car. I know a lot of people like Street Speed Seven One Seven is you know he got he's getting rid of his stick shift uh, Z06 with a thousand horsepower because he realized that at that power level you've got to have an automatic. Well, he's also racing the car constantly, beating on it constantly, and uh, which is fine. You can do that, and he realized the automatic was the way to go, but. Um, I think for this car, for what it is, this should be just fine. It works. It's, and at low RPMs, it's it's not, I can't even, you don't feel a difference. I can tell because the Stage 3 cam, it's it's got that chop, chop, chop to it. It's idles a little, you know, feels like it's idling rough, but other than that, drivability is great. The clutch, I can tell, is a little different, but that might be just because it needs to be broken in. But it drives like a normal, everyday, you know, regular Corvette Stingray, so until you get on it. The power band really kicks in at about 3,500, 4,000 RPM. That's when you want to hold on to your, hold on to your bridges. Because <laughs> yes, this is a, this is a, uh, like I said, Novi supercharger. So it's, it's not a roots type blower like I have in my car on top of the engine. It's driven off the accessory drives with the, uh, looks like a, it looks like an accessory when you open the hood. It doesn't look like mine at all. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, but basically it's, it builds power almost like a turbocharger does. And it just screams up high. But uh, it's 12 pounds of boost, by the way. So yeah, 12 pounds. Absolute animal. Absolute animal. I'm gonna. I, I have uh, 
uh, Ditto drag radials on it right now. Those were pretty new when I got them uh, right before the engine broke, so I got a lot of tread left. But I can tell that these things are going to burn out pretty quick. We're going to get an open part of highway up here pretty soon, and I'm going to show little brother here what it's all about. <laughs> I will say, uh, you guys know me, I'm six foot three, 250. And uh, the car is a little tight. C7s aren't uh, the biggest Corvette they've ever made. But with the roof off, it's not so bad anymore. This car is my third Corvette. I had a 2001 when I was in college. A 2007 after college, I got a job and bought myself a new, uh, again, a base C7. I've never really gone to the, the Z06 end because it's so much more money and you can have a lot of fun with I mean, if I didn't yeah, a regular Corvette is not a bad car. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you, you bank the other thirty-five grand you're saving. And... Weird number. Don't but, know what uh, it is. But no, I, I now with what I have into this build, it's obviously Z06 territory for money. But again, I've got like Taylor said, probably about nine nine thirty horsepower at the crank, seven eighty two at the wheels. It's all I could ask for. I mean, yeah, do I like the look of the Z06? I absolutely do. I love the stance, the Grand Sports also. Um, they're, they're, it's badass, but this car, is, this car is getting it done still, so. Which, by the way, another interesting fact, the shop that did this, Speed Inc., which uh, did the work on my car, my blowers, you know, they, when they got this all done, uh, said that basically this is the highest horsepower LT yep. engine they've produced without meth or nitrous, which I found shocking because they do a lot of uh, LS cars, LT cars, so given the fact that this car's been out for three years now, this this format, this engine, the fact that they, they've they not produced something with this much power yet is shocking, but again, this is a shitload of power. It's, you know, we're 900. In, uh, <laughs> we're in Saturday afternoon traffic, so it's kind of tough to find an open spot. Yeah. Uh, when I get a straightaway with no other cars around, I'll, I'll try something. Also, when you're not, when I'm not flooring it, just giving it a good, a good, some good acceleration. It's a smooth delivery. That the power just, it's, it's getting you going. Yeah, we've also got the exhaust in quiet mode, right? So the, I got the MPP exhaust option, which is variable valves based on RPMs, or you can turn it on track mode, and it'll open the valves 100%. So you're, you're straight bypassing the mufflers. It's like it's as if you have uh, no mufflers. So. <laughs> Right now I'm in touring. So what touring does is keeps it in quiet mode up until 3500 RPM. Then it opens and you're gonna hear it here. I'm gonna do it in a second. Um, I finally got some open road. But uh, what it does is it opens the exhaust. Now with this much power, the engine, the backflow, you want you want it open. I mean, Taylor with his SS, he might have done videos about his, uh, his exhaust issues, which is they, they tighten up the exhaust and then his supercharger power it just, you know, it pushes back. Back pressure. Back pressure. So I can also run this in Eco, which if I, I took this off the, out of the tune, uh, displacement on demand, so it doesn't do that anymore. It, it never turns off four cylinders, but what it does is keeps the exhaust. Um, Closed in, in, under all circumstances. Yeah, so it's going through the mufflers 100%. And while I like that sound, it's not, you're going to hear it here in a second. It's 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 NASCAR when, <laughs> when I get on it. So I don't, I don't necessarily like that when I'm driving around here. This is track mode, if you can hear any different. So that's Which, that's loud. <laughs> if you can feel the car, it's like bassy. Alright. I've ever gotten to the speed we were at. Uh, oh, I don't. That's, holy shit! Driving in uh, Paul's Hellcat last week, two weeks ago, thousand horsepower Hellcat. Well, this thing weighs a thousand pounds less than his called Hellcat. And I'm, I'm a little bit lighter than him as well. Yeah, and Ann's a little lighter than Paul too. But I, I, for anybody that cares, gas mileage. Oh yeah, the bad part. The bad part. Um, <laughs> I would say somebody who drives a base C7, 460 horsepower. Like an absolute princess, probably gets in the mid 20s, 25. On a long road trip, 30, easy. The way I drive, <laughs> before, so stock, I was getting 
about 21, 22. Then I put the supercharger on and I got about 17 and a half. Well, I reset the odometer the minute I picked up or the uh, mileage, uh, gas Trip mileage meter, chart, yeah. the minute I picked up the car and I've got 170 miles on it and I'm getting 11.2 miles per gallon on premium. 11.2 is like Ferrari 599 territory. Uh, I got a nice open stretch with the, uh, the Escort radar detectors <laughs> not being friendly to me. It's picking up something. Yeah, Actually, my, uh, this stretch of road we're on right now, this morning when I met up with you, I was in my SS and uh, I had to take it to drop it off to get some stuff, uh, get the recall done and get an oil change. But on this same stretch of road, a red Ferrari 360 Modena Spider pulled up next to me and we hit a red light together and nothing happened. The guy didn't want to race because he had his girl in the car and probably didn't want to get embarrassed. But I see so many people in Corvettes and Camaro, you know, hot rods that I, I never really see them getting on it or pulling yeah. out and doing it. Well, occasionally, <laughs> I will say Vipers, I do see guys with Vipers, they drive them like they stole them. Yeah. Not that that's responsible per se, but so many of these cars are just, they're pulled out of the garage, taken to the old ice cream shop. Brought to the car shows, cleaned sit up. Sit there and get sunburned. <laughs> Taylor and I like to cruise. We'd, yeah. I'd rather do that than sit in a parking lot all day and turn into a lobster. But it's been difficult because all winter, uh, summer long here he hasn't had his car. So now he's finally got it and got it back. And the three of us now, the Boost Brothers as we call ourselves, uh, finally we can do some cruising together, except now my car is in the shop getting an oil change and recall stuff. It's so. never, it's never ending. It's always something. <laughs> it, I feel like we haven't all three cruised together in two years. I don't even know. Yeah. The other problem is we all kind of, you and Taylor lives a little bit farther away from uh, myself and Jordan. But, and the kids started coming. This last yeah, month, kids, so. yeah, you know, wives and all sorts of things that we signed ourselves up for that are great, by the way. We love it. Love it. Love it all. They, uh, the one thing though, when they did the tune, they noticed the uh, intake air temperature was very high. It was one, whatever the numbers were, it was a lot higher than it should be, yeah. which means I need more cooling, uh, intercooler cooling. Which and you guys know if you watch my video with my car, I have a similar issue with the uh, intake air temperature. Yes. And so. your, your choices are better intercooling, which his car has an intercooler and it's down in front, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah, by the, the way where the radiators the, are. Because of the way the car is, you know, engineered, the intercooler is actually sitting like this, it's right on the front, and the air. Well, if you heard that, but you can hear the exhaust go from quiet to loud. <laughs> yeah, but the air actually is funneled through a, a kind of a dam, air dam in the front that was also came with the kit to funnel it up through the, the uh, intercooler. But because this car, I mean, you know Corvettes, you pop the hood, there's just no extra room anywhere. So what I had them do was lower the red line from seven to 6,500. So I, I'm not technically making 782 because I'm not up at seven, but you know, I'm not it's, also not <laughs> blowing my engine, so yeah. that's fine. Actually, I probably wouldn't blow the engine. It would be other components that would that would get fried. Well, I think when, uh when the, air, it, when the air temperature gets too high, your car, your car's computer adjusts for it, and basically you end up with lower horsepower, lower output. But you still don't want that either. You don't want. I'd rather be safer. Anything bad I'd happen, rather right? be safer. I went into this new build thinking, if I get 650 rear wheel horsepower, good. Happy. Yeah. Because what I can always do is buy a bigger pro or a bigger uh, supercharger next year, a head unit and smaller pulley, and throw more boost at it. But I, then we realize there's this restrictor that. Yeah, the restrictor plate that we didn't know about, the shop didn't say, I don't know, did they know about it necessarily? They, I mean, they, they literally, just, they're like, oh, hey, your car made this much power. Yeah, which blew me oh, away. Oh, hey, I, uh, here's a picture. We took the restrictor plate out. It's like, wait, what? Like, it's, yeah, <laughs> it's basically, uh, back to the fuel talk, because this car has a much higher need for fuel now with the extra power, the, uh, the fuel pumps that it has, the fuel pump, there's one in the tank that feeds the pump up on the engine. So low side is in the pump. I replaced that in the high side the fuel pump. So now it's now it's no, basically it's oh, what the Z06 comes with. And the big uh, Z06 or uh, LT4 injectors also. So yeah. you have to do that. They told me if you don't do that, this is all pointless. So yeah. oh my miles per gallon are actually up a little bit. I guess <laughs> cruising here in traffic and not having open highways helping. So I'm at 12.6. <laughs> 
Basically, this is not a road trip car. No. Although, not. speaking of road trips, uh, Paul Family Cruising got invited to the Street Speed uh, call out October car, car. What do they call it? Cartoberfest or whatever they're calling it. Uh, drag racing, Cecil County Dragway, Maryland. Well, Paul wants me to go. He wants as many people that he knows to go and uh, show up and have a big, uh, you know, a big showing. Well, it's about a 12-hour drive from my house and 780 miles. 12 hours. Yeah. So I, I'd like to go. I don't know if any of you guys, any people that follow me, live out that way. You want to go or think I should go? If you went to the last one that he had back at the beginning of August, but I know it's a huge turnout and I know it's a big deal for uh, you know the smaller YouTube guys like myself, but. It is a lot of mileage at a time of the year when I'm not sure I want to be driving my car that distance in case the weather turns south. So I, I would my <laughs> my gut instinct is to not do it only yeah. because I like for me I don't think I would drive this car that far this fresh off a of build even though oh, I yeah, it would be yeah. broken in I just you know there's going to be shenanigans on the highway on the way out there and I I I've had enough this year of torture and trauma <laughs> waiting for my car. But I would consider it next year if it was closer. I mean, there's a lot in the Midwest. There's a lot of yeah. things to do in the Midwest. And there's I just, the half I mile racing. There's uh, obviously quarter mile racing and drag strips. But I'm not. A, I don't like road. I'm not a car. I don't want to sit in a car for 12 hours. That's not, not enjoyable. enjoyable. Shift. And 
they announced they were doing that, or at least they were doing that, that's when I, the decision was made for me, because uh, yeah. I got kids and a, and a wife and a two-door car doesn't make sense. I've never liked the new generation Camaros until this, is it the 6 gen? 6 gens now, yeah. I love the styling, I love the, the LEDs, the profile, I, you know. Yeah, the 5th gen seems like it was just put together to, just put together just to get something out there to sell. Not that there's anything wrong with the cars, they perform well, they're good cars, but I also just the styling to me didn't appeal to me. It was a little too big of a car. I also didn't want a car that there is a rental car V6 version of. Yeah. I, I just, same problem I have. Same reason why I, you know, with my car, Dodge Charger, uh, Scat Pack, or SRT, great cars, but I don't like seeing, you know, you pull up at uh, the grocery store and there's the V6 variant. Yeah. I know they're different. You got the V8, the V6, whatever, but still, it's just the, the I'm, image I'm, in my head. Well, Same I'm pretty with the Mustang. I'm pretty sure someday, if, like probably the C8 Corvette will come out. They'll probably they'll do the mid-engine, but I don't know that everyone will be mid-engine. It's a nice Porsche. There you go. Porsche. Porsche GT3 with the uh, Martini Rossi livery on us. It's pretty straight. <laughs> Back at the house now, and uh, got the hood pops so you can see. But basically, it's your general uh, run of the mill LT1, but it's got this nice big blower on it. Pulley is pretty large, but it's actually, uh, like you said, it's a 12 pound pulley, so 12 pounds of boost now. And you got your headers, and uh, yeah, it's a whole, uh, whole new engine in this car. We actually just took the uh, stock LT1 that came out of this and stuck it, uh, stuck it up at our work for now. So. That's uh, that's this, but as you can see the blower uh, draws its air from the air box, which I believe in there is where the uh, restrictor plate was, was in like the lid to the air box. And then uh, compresses it, goes down here, through the intercooler, back up into the engine. So it's uh, fairly simple, but also because that's black, it's kind of, you know, kind of just, you know, fades into the, uh, into the background. So if you were to just pop the hood and take a quick look at it, you might not see that it's a supercharged engine so anyway i uh, hope you guys like this there'll be more videos of this car and the gt500 and me um, after i get my car back of course so please don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up hit the subscribe button and leave some comments below on anything else you want to see and we'll check you out next time i've been told my car sounds like a tornado coming down the road so i'm gonna let taylor drive it and just through the just through the neighborhood right yeah just so i can hear all the sounds it makes whooshes and swooshes and chop 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 <laughs> Probably gonna scrape. Oh no. See there's the front dam that I was telling you about to funnel the air up into the intercooler. It does whistle. So he's got it in uh, quiet mode for the exhaust. You gotta tell daddy that you want a Corvette when he comes back, okay? Here we go. It's coming back. I just, being in the cockpit all the time, I never, I can hear sounds and imagine what it's like, but. Jesus. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Whose car do you like better, Daddy's or Uncle Adam's? Um, yours. Yes. What? That's we got to get that on video. Uh -huh. oh. Go ahead and edit that. Go ahead and scratch that one out. What about Mommy's car? You like Mommy's car, right? Yeah. Cause she's got a race car.